This is your um, DVD and Blu-ray film collector of both general and adult uh, review. And before we uh, start, this is basically for 18 and up. Uh, this is for adults only. Uh, anybody under the age of 18 and want to see this have to be with their parents and only their parents or guardian can make the comments. That's the way it goes. Now, I just I want to tell you that um, I recently ordered this restored version. The restored version of uh, Invaders from Mars. And I think I could add some more context to the explanation of it. As I said, I had ordered this restored classic of Invasion of Mars, which was directed and uh, produced by, directed by William Cameron Menzies. And I'm going to read a little bit what it has to say in the box. And then we'll have a little discussion about it. In the early days of the 1950s, Cold War tension and the burgeoning space race created a heady mix of paranoia and unbridled creativity as filmmakers speculated as to the marvels and horrors that were lay beyond the stars. Among those leading the charge, William Cameron Menzies, things that come, invaders from Mars, terrified audiences upon releasing in 1953 with chilling visions and insidious attacks on small town um, Americana. And I'll skip and I'll talk with the bonus features. Brand new 4K restoration of the film Restored from the original camera negative and positives, restored 4K 1953 trailer, uh, newly commissioned a trailer 19, uh, 2022, interview with stars Jimmy Hunt, William Cameron Menzies, biographer James Curtis, recollections of Menzies' eldest granddaughter Pamela Lawson, featurettes which uh, acclaimed film directors John Landon, Joe Dante, and Mark uh, Goldblatt, effects and effects artist, and two-time Oscar winner Robert Robert Skotak, foremost expert on invaders from Mars, and enthusiast film preservationist Scott McQueen. John Sayles' introduction of Turner Classic Film Festival, April of 19, 2022, uh, before and after clips of the restoration original archival elements with the film restoration the supervisor scott mcqueen restored segments in 2k with alternate international versions alternate ending versions extended palanitarian scenes galleries with original press books pages behind the scene from restoration process 20 page booklet extending uh restoration say on restoration process invaders from ours a nightmare restoration by scott mcqueen now if i can remember when i was a little kid i first saw the 1953 version of invaders from mars when i was a kid in the 60s 69 at paramount theater here where i live in kitty's matinee and there's when I was a kid, there were certain parts that really affect me, or I got really obsessed by it. And uh, one of the obsessions is when the Martians put that little thing behind the victim's head to cause them to become zombies. And the get and the sand suction that r I really got obsessed by those scenes. They were they don't affect me, you know, but they really disturb me. And another thing, the sand suction reminded me of something. 
for years I kept wondering, what that reminds me of? And I just I just found out what it reminded me of. I, it, I just found out of what it reminded me of. A toilet bowl. And when a toilet is being flushed, shh, that's what it reminded me of. And, uh, At that time, I think they were just printing them on Eastman color instead of the original Cine, Super Cine color process. And uh, in one of the in one of the discussions, uh, or one of the it either was in the book, it was just saying that Helena this was Helena Carter's last film. She said they said they only she only played romantic leads and this was her first meaty role and they I guess she figured out she's not getting any better role so she quit. Such a shame. She was in a James Cagney film made back in 1950. I forgot the name of the title. But uh, but I want to tell you something that has been nothing but myths. Uh, the myth that this movie was shot in 3D one time. It was never made in 3D. When this film was being produced, the equipment was not available yet. It was when Arch Obler decided to make his guru, Lions a Guru in 3D that, that, that the equipment, the natural vision equipment became available. Now the um, filmmaker, what's his name, if I can look at, okay, Mark Goldblatt. He probably was saying was the truth. They claimed during pre-production at one time they were thinking of uh, putting, uh, uh, shooting it in 3D during the pre-production. You know, uh, William Cameron McKenzie's and others. And they thought about well, what happened if they show it at a, at a matinee? Well, you know how kids react when they don't got parents controlling them. They would be playing, they wouldn't be paying attention to me. They'd be playing their 3D glasses, pretending to be Martians in the theaters. They'd take it off like in the cross-eyed version. Well, what happened if it broke that and one of the things got out of sync? They'd want their money back. So they thought it was a bad idea. But I don't know what year they talked about this. Was it the year when they were when they knew about the natural vision camera and demonstrations were being made? 1950 they were making demonstrations showing it to theaters i know that they went to mgm in 47 to, to, to get and um but anyway they might have talked about this but overall this is a very interesting science fiction film of the 1950s it's in a way that was um, based on the uh, the Cold War, just as Gog was, and the Martians were were the enemy, representing the Stalinist versions of communism. In fact, the Martian uh, the Martian people that were in the movie. The, the leader was actually a uh, was actually a small actress who I think they said appeared in the Wizard of Oz. And uh, as Jimmy, let's see now, excuse me, Jimmy, as Jimmy Huntstead, she and her his mother knew each other because they were high school friends. And you know, it was the irony that Jimmy was 14 years old. And all of a sudden you see him years later, he's an older man in his 80s. It's, 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 just, it's just imagine when you see these people as little kids and, and years later they get older. Now, uh, Cam William Cameron Menzies produced this film uh, at the Republic sound stages they must the Republic Studios must have rented sound stages for uh, for independent filmmakers that's how they made their living too and uh, 
his uh, daughter, great great granddaughter, excuse me, was talking about when he had breaks and films he was designing, that he would paint the house, the paint the, the walls of the houses different colors, like redesigning the rooms. And she's talking about how one of the styles he did was how it was interesting how he painted some of the rooms in, in, or areas in old style looks. And uh, the thing about it is that they also included the rest, also included the before and afters. They pulled uh, many, many of the things that they used from uh, things from film from 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 different libraries, in which the films were not in great shape. For example, the extension versions were um, uh, for the British, the European versions were magenta, but they fixed that up. Now, when I was looking at the European version of the extension of the uh, uh, of the uh, astrology astronomy sequence, I kind of felt that this extension distracted away from the story. I don't know why the British didn't like the shorter version, and also the ending, the redone ending. It was dumb. Why did they want her to change it? Now this picture was a low budget picture. It took about four weeks. And by the time that William Cameron Menzi used Super Cine Color, well, Color Corporation of America, I think, bought it. So they took out Super Cine Color. They said shot in color. But their process was no different than um, than Technicolor in a way, except the process involves the three, the three, the two colors on one side and the one color on the front side. So this, there was a separation problem, unlike Technicolor. So it's slightly soft focus as a result. But. Um, as I said, this picture was enjoyable, and I enjoyed love. I loved, I loved seeing it again. It was, it was great. And um, let's see now. Uh, okay, Scott McQueen. Now I first saw Scott McQueen was explaining about the. Uh, Phantom of the Opera, uh, 1943 Phantom of the Opera films. I don't know whether he's an actor, he's in show business, but he was uh, uh, he was uh, involved in the supervision of the restoration. And as I said before, they did a wonderful job. Yes, they did a wonderful job. Let's look now. Again. And there's another interesting thing to notice. If I'm not wrong, William Cameron Manzi was involved in the 3D product. The maze. That's some. That's that. That's some other. That's I, I, I under a, a pseudonym. I wrote a review on that on IMBD, and I don't believe in doing same visuals. But um, oh, I forgot to tell you. Guess what? Roman is almost done. And they added another 3D short. And I'll give you a hint. This 3D short originally was a part of a compile of other 3D shorts that were originally released on old-fashioned VHS by the Something Weird video distributors that have been out of business for years. And uh, I think it was flat. So it'll be a delight to see. But Roman is almost done. Now, we're going to show. Here's the box cover. Here's 
Here's a side. This is a picture of uh, Helena Carter. Here's, a, here's the regular box cover, same thing in the sides. And uh, here's a booklet. You can see what it has. It talks about different things. It talks about the Super Cine color process. It talks about how by the time they did that, Super Cine color went out of business. You know, it's still a film plant. They use the building. And uh, they show the restoration sequences, if you can see that. The, but I think, as I said before, I think Scott McQueen, oh yeah, and here's the little, um, here's a little thing, here's a disc, excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous, every time I put on a show, well, this is not a professional show, this is reality, <laughs> but I say that Scott McQueen and his team did, the re did an excellent job, and I will say, I will say that, I'll say it again, this movie was never shot in 3D. The 3D equipment weren't available by the time they were producing it. Look at it in, in, in uh, Bob Fermanac's 3D archives. Well, this is Mike McGee, your adult and family-oriented DVD and film reviewer. If you like, in spite of my nervousness and forgetfulness a bit, if you like, if you like it, please please comment and subscribe and if you don't like it you can make a comment anyway this is before this is all about discussion on things so I'm, I'm glad that you paid a little uh, pay, I'm glad that you I'm glad you spend some time watching me and I hope to see you next time bye <laughs>